And it's very informal. That's the format anyway. So. Yeah. It's very informal. We started. Oh, we started. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Welcome at Media Park uh, Ja Congress. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Eric Anderson. Um, you will be speaking uh, here uh, later on today. Yes. Um, first, can you uh, tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is Eric Anderson. I'm the CEO and founder of Premier Digital Services, which is one of the largest uh, digital distribution servicing companies in the world. Um, we work with major Hollywood studios, major networks, uh, not just within the United States, but also major content providers around the world to basically get their content um, from them to hundreds of media platforms uh, in every country. Yeah, and, uh, and as I'm, uh, as I'm in informed, uh, uh, right, you were uh, working um, uh, at Apple when video started um, uh, in the iTunes store? Yes. Uh, um, yeah. So you've, um, well, you've, you've uh, experienced the, the, the growth of, uh, of the video market? Yeah. Um, if I ask you, where, we, where are we standing now? Oh boy, um, I would say there is as much growth about to, well, more growth about to come than what has come before already. Um, it's going to make the last you know, five to eight years look uh, insignificant in comparison because everyone is now focusing all of their attention on the rest of the world and you know, dominating the US market, anything like that, seems great within that context, but when you compare it to the scale of the rest of the planet, it's nothing. You know, and, and so, so I mean, now it's it's an incredibly exciting time because for the first time you have this notion of, wait a minute, a, a service doesn't have to have an audience of of just a specific locality or just you know you know several million people or even a hundred million people. Instead, you can be talking about how many people could turn into tune into my program, a billion. You know, I mean, that, that's the scale that it's all going to be working on. And I'm not talking in like five to ten years. This is over the next two to three years. And yeah. it's going to happen so fast. Yeah, so but you, you say what we have seen happening with like Facebook and Twitter, that, yep. that social media was the first sector, I think, to go global. Yeah, uh, and, and to prove that, that you could do it. Yeah. You know, and that you could actually integrate all of these people from every possible culture, walk of life, everything, and get them to agree on a single platform and be willing to use it and embrace it and everything like that. So I think you know when Facebook made their announcement of a billion users and everyone was like, oh my God, this is incredible. I think that's going to start to become a little more normal. <laughs> that's that's a, a sobering thought. So, you, so, so, what uh, do you see in the future? Do you see like uh, video platforms that are as big as that? Oh yeah. I, I mean, if you look, take just iTunes as an example, um, now that they've expanded their video platform to pretty much every international storefront that they have, there's a potential user base just of what they've already got of over 250 million users. Yeah, because that's the, the amount of user accounts Apple has yep. at the moment. Yeah, so of active credit cards. After active credit cards, so basically the Apple video store has that potential already yep. now. Yeah, yeah. And, and most of those users are coming from the markets that they've already matured in. I mean, that's the US, it's Europe, it's Japan, it's stuff like that. But over the next you know year, two years, these new markets are going to start to embrace the platform because a lot of them are already using it for music and have been. And once they start realizing they can get video the same way, you're going to see that 250 go and turn into 400, 500, and then it just starts taking off from there. Which, which uh, factors are still uh, obstructing the growth of the OnlyBound video? Like your company, you're in between the content uh, creator, a provider, and, and the big platform. So yeah. uh, you, you deliver content to iTunes, to Hulu, to the... To, to the, Netflix, to... To Netflix, to the big... To, to Swiss to big TV, guys. to you yeah. know, all, all of these companies, uh, um, so big and small. That, meaning that they all have different technical specifications, different metadata uh, specifications. Yeah. Is that is that a problem? In, in, in well... Um, for your... For I, your, I was going to say, for me, for it's a business. It's, an it's you know, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I would say it's, it's really not that much of a problem because it's... Even if they did agree on, you know, even if there was a singular specification, everything like that, the transformation of data from one format to another, that's been, you know, commoditized. That's been made relatively simple. Um, what's incredibly difficult at this point is there is almost more, well, there is more, da more new information being produced every day than is being ingested by these platforms. So the backlog is only growing. It's not diminishing. Yeah. So the, the demand that is being put on service companies like Premier, like the big houses that probably people have heard of, um, 
the supply can't even come close to matching it. And you know, my company has gone from one person to over 150 people in five years, much of that growth just in two years. And even at that pace, the demand placed on us by our clients, and now that those clients have gone global, it, it's insatiable. I mean, people are coming to us and they're not saying, oh, we have one or two TV series we want to put up. They're coming and saying, I have 10,000 films that I would like on iTunes, Amazon, PlayStation Network, Xbox, everything, uh, in the next six months. Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> and, and, and you're just going, okay, wait a minute, it took you 50 years to accumulate this library, and you're asking me to convert it to an entirely new platform that hasn't even existed for a decade tomorrow. Yeah. That's not going to happen. And so that's one barrier that I think is, is curbing the growth. Um, but that's honestly one that's just, it's solving itself. It's largely financial and whatnot, and so it's, it's, it's happening, but it's also um, education, uh, converting people from the traditional way that they consume media to yeah. a new way, to a more on-demand model, to an always available model. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's new for most of the planet still. It's, you know, everyone's still conditioned to a linear model of, okay, it's seven o'clock, time to tune in, and now I'm gonna yeah. see my show. And uh, so it's, I think you're gonna see most of it be um, a generational shift. So when who, the group of people who are now between the ages of 10 years old and 20 years old, over the next five to 10 years, as they become the adults that are really driving the world, this is all they know. And so that's all their kids are gonna know. And that's when it's, the switch is really gonna flip. Yeah, Eric, from your perspective, the Netherlands is probably totally insignificant if you're coming from LA, but I, uh, the talk of the town here is that Netflix is finally uh, moving into the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably not completely aware with which uh, VOD platforms there are, but. What would you say if you try to think of the impact of, of a, a company like, like Netflix moving into the Netherlands? If you look at what happened in the US, um, what would you say? If you use the US as a template, uh, the impact will be staggering. I, I mean, over the course of about five years, Netflix streaming platform went from pretty much non-existent to, uh, you guys are getting me to give away my talk. I'm giving you all the points Oh, you're points going now. to talk about it? Yeah, I'm going to talk it's about no it. Problem no, 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 no problem with the people. No, no, it's no ah, problem. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> because I, I, as I say, uh, the statistic that I'm pointing out in my talk that I think is just mind-blowing is uh, over the course of five years, Netflix's streaming platform went from pretty much non-existent to now it consumes 30% of all bandwidth used in the United States. Yep. So um, without talking about number of people, anything, just looking at it as a national infrastructure you know, you know, play. A third of all internet use is somebody watching a movie or a TV show from Netflix, from yep. one company. And that company didn't exist, you know, a decade ago, not in any meaningful way. Right. And so that, that tells you what's the kind of impact that it could have on the Netherlands, that it could have on the rest of Europe, that it could have on the rest of the world. Um, they've got a great brand name, they've got a great product, they're really good at marketing, they're incredibly smart engineers. Um, so while I, th I think Europe actually has a little bit of a head start over where Netflix was in the U.S. when it first started, but I think that it, that head start is still largely pep um, perpetrated by established media companies, more traditional media companies, and, and Netflix, not to use an, an Apple phrase, Netflix definitely thinks different, and, and they aren't looking at, you know, when they move into the Netherlands, they aren't looking at the Netherlands as the end-all, be-all of what they want to do. They're looking at how the Netherlands fits into a scheme to yeah. grab the entire planet. Yeah. And so they'll focus on it individually, but also as part of a much larger play. Yeah, what, it, what, what is Netflix doing so well that they, they took this big uh, you know, jump forward in the United States? Um, is it the quality, the user interface, the, the, the marketing? Well, the, the, the Probably three things. Um, one is, uh, this got them started, and it was you know talked about in the media for a long time, and now nobody really talks about it anymore, but it, they still are head and shoulders above almost anyone else, um, both from an actual mathematical standpoint and also just a user experience, uh, their recommendation engine. So it, it was something that they really trumpeted as distinguishing themselves from everyone else, and yeah. and uh, and it really is quite good. And that, it, was, that was even in the period when they still put uh, DVDs in. It, exactly, uh, yeah, I would say yeah. you might like this, and, yeah. and yeah. it worked really well, and people liked it, and so that developed this loyalty to the brand. Loyalty to the brand developed, you know, people then, they hit that sweet spot that every company searches for, but is so hard to figure out how to do, of 
people liked Netflix. Yep. They actually developed a relationship with it. You felt cool if you were one of the people who was using it. And so you'd tell your friends, and if they didn't hear about it, you suddenly thought like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna educate you about this. And then, then they were like, wow, you know so much. And then they tried it out, and then they told somebody, and they told somebody. And then you know, all of the, that subscriber base turned into revenue, which turned into licensing dollars that they could use to add more substantial, more popular content to their streaming platform, which then all of a sudden, you know, people were starting to go, man, I feel like I've kind of watched everything. Wait a minute, now there are major Hollywood movies on here. Now there's stuff I actually want to see. Oh, holy cow, reinvigorated it again. And then, yeah. and then it just exploded. And, uh, and I think that's just going to keep happening. And now Netflix even moved into producing TV series themselves. Yeah. Is that a trend you believe is, it's going to be more widespread over the years? Or I, I think it's a necessary transition for them. Um, it, they, they have an interesting business model. Uh, and in that, you know, I mean, they don't, they don't, well, until recently, they don't create any of the product that they sell. And they can't control the price of the product that they sell. And so there's no protection for their business model. I mean, they can predict their revenue because they look at what their user base is, and so it's it's an easy number to predict. And the only way they can increase that revenue is by expanding that user base, which is not easy to do. I mean, they've made it look easy, but it's not easy. It takes a lot of marketing dollars, everything like that. And, uh, and so they have a cost that's impossible for them to control, or very difficult for them to control. They have a revenue stream that is very difficult for them to control. And so those two are going to be at odds at some point. So the only way out of it, and I think they were incredibly smart by doing this, was to say, well, we need to be in charge of our own product. And so by creating their own content, you know, now they actually can control the cost of bringing content into their ecosystem, which they can then use to market and increase user base, stand themselves out from more you know, services that are previously established that are trying to compare themselves to Netflix now. There's a great quote uh, that, that Netflix actually gave where they said, we need to become HBO before HBO becomes us. You know, <laughs> and, that was, and, and it's true. It, it's true because HBO with the HBO Go platform, yeah. what is that? That's essentially Netflix, but with a much smaller catalog, but yeah. all incredibly high quality because it's yeah. all what you would get on HBO. And so Netflix is saying, well, we can play that game. We've got billions of dollars. All right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, because one of the problems is, of, is of course, especially when, uh, when when coming to to Europe. And Europe is still not one uh, uh, rights-wise uh, mm -hmm. one thing. So they have to negotiate every country uh, one at a time. again. Yep. So what I say, say to people is, okay, they have the technology uh, working. The price seems right, but I first want to see what their um, a catalog will be when they when right. they arrive here. Because I heard people say that, for example, in Canada, they have only like one third of what you have in America. Right. And someone today uh, <coughs> on Twitter living in Finland said, uh, well, to be yeah. quite honest, what they have in their catalog is quite quite uh, disappointing. It, it, yeah, it and, is. And then look at it from the perspective from a country that has the size of half LA, right. greater LA. Right. Yeah. Well, and that, that yeah. which gets into what I think is, um, you know, you asked what Netflix's advantages were. And I think one of their other key advantages is price. They are right at that sweet spot of pricing where, you know, for, for most you know, you know, middle families and above, it, it's an afterthought. You know, you, you're not worried about it. And you sign up, you subscribe, and it comes off your credit card, and you never think about it again. And the fact that they come in now through, and I don't know enough about the uh, European market to know exactly how it's framed, but I know what happened in the U.S., and I can see that happening here. Whereas, I mean, I use Netflix all the time, but what I've got is I have, you know, um, an Apple TV, and so I have iTunes, and I have Netflix, and I have Hulu. And so if I want to watch, if I missed a show last night and I don't want to buy it, I can watch it on Hulu. If um, I'm just bored and I'm looking for something to watch and I don't have a particular agenda, I'll watch Netflix. If I know exactly what I want and it's new, I'll buy it from iTunes. And so it's not as much. Um, so Netflix's catalog, their their price point makes the you know the barrier of entry for consumer really insignificant. It's very easy to adopt them and they offer the first month or two months for free. Yeah. So, you know, come in, try it out, see what you think, then it automatically convert to charge. And before you know it, it's just kind of integrated its way into your viewing habits where you're like, yeah, the, the, the catalog is limited, but it's not nothing. And a lot of times you just want to sit down, you just want to watch something, you don't want to be too concerned about what it is. Yeah. And you'll queue something up and they'll build viewers that way and before you know it, They'll have all the same, the, the mirror of the catalog they have in the U.S. And, uh, and there you go. Uh, you worked at uh, Apple 10 years ago, something like that? Uh, it was about five years ago. Five years ago, to, the, the, the team building iTunes video. Yep. I don't know if you're aware of that, but in, in Holland, everybody's adoring Apple and 
I mean, everybody who worked at Apple is already something. Wow, you <laughs> so you're our hero. Yeah, you're oh our boy. hero. Did you ever <laughs> meet uh, Steve Jobs? Or not? I, 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 um, I received a couple of emails from him, and I sat next to him once at lunch which was uh, the most intimidating lunch of my entire life. Uh, once, he, once he sat down and I was sitting there eating, I, I think I stopped and about 45 seconds later, I was like, and I'm done. And I walked away. <laughs> the, the conversation just stopped at the table and that, and that was it. Um, and any time there was an email coming from him, it was never good news. You know, it was, it was always to say, fix it. You know, you know it would be three words. That would, that would be it. Yeah, but, but the, you were part of that team uh, building iTunes video. Uh, I mean, the stories are always that a guy like Steve, you know, was really on every single detail involved. I mean, is that true? In, in um, I would say it's true on a level uh, for what was exposed to consumers. Okay. So uh, the design of the interface, um, uh, the editorial aspects of the store, featuring everything like that. When it first started, he played a very large role in. Um, what the product was going to be, what content types we were going to offer, when we were going to offer them, how many networks we were going to roll out, uh, when we were going to do go from quarter res to SD to HD, you know, everything like that. That was handed down, not as a, hey, is this possible, but as a, do it. I'm going out on stage in 30 seconds and I'm going to say that we're doing this, so uh, you better figure it out. You know? <laughs> but the figuring it out component, uh, you know, uh, he did, he did, at least it was never particularly involved there. It was really a lot more on the customer side okay. of creating an, an amazing experience. And even the one or two correspondences that, that got to me were, were often motivated not by a, hey, the company needs to do this, but a, hey, I got emailed by a customer who is upset about an experience they had, fix it. You know, and so, and, and that fix it could mean, all right, for this one video, do you take care of the problem, or it could mean, wow, we need to change the store because they didn't like this experience, and so we have to rethink how we're doing so, things. So, but that was uh, interesting the way you say it. So, that was never, or maybe sometimes, but it was not particularly, we do a continuous um, 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 a research with the customers. It could be just one email coming oh, in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was a joke that we'd have at the company a lot of times because uh, people on my team, other people in iTunes, we would have ideas of how we wanted, where we wanted to take the store, what we thought our next plan should be, and we'd be like, man, and, and sometimes you'd feel like, you know, it's a big company, and you'd feel like no one is really listening to you, and, uh, and so people would think, gosh, I should just create some dummy Yahoo email account and email Steve my idea, and then it'll filter back to myself, and then we'll get to do it. You know? was, you know. But uh, everyone was always too scared that Apple was always watching and that they would know. And that, that, that would what did it. you learn from working there for that period? Um, you, know, you know, probably the biggest lesson was what was possible. Uh, in that first year of building the video store, uh, it was less than five people. That, that, re that really built it. I mean, there was obviously some pre-existing infrastructure, the iTunes Music Store that we were leveraging it off of, but in terms of people that were dedicated to the task, it was about five people. And in that first year, we got close to hitting a billion dollars in revenue. Yeah. So it, it kind of tells yeah, you amazing, what yeah. you can do yeah. with this technology and in this space with just some really dedicated, really smart people that are willing to work their butts off. Yeah. You know, and so. Uh, that, that was the biggest lesson, um, just what's possible. So, and have you learned as well to send um, emails to your colleagues with fix it? I have a very different management style. Yeah, you're the I have a very different management style. It's, uh, you know, uh, Premier is a growing company, but still a very small company. And I would say um, I get my employees to work very hard, but I do it by um, trying to create a motivating environment for them, not necessarily an intimidating one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, and any other things uh, you're going to say on, on, on stage you want to share with us now? Um, uh, gosh, mostly just that, you know, and this is sort of how I'm wrapping up the talk, that, uh, and this is how we started this one, that this is really, you know, what's the most exciting time to be in this industry? What is the time of the most opportunity? Um, right now, and tomorrow, and the day after that. You know, it's like we haven't seen the most opportunity and the most exciting time to happen. No, we're and just it, starting. Yeah, yeah, it's just started yeah. and it's always, it, and, you know, for the foreseeable future, it's always going to be more than it is right at this moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. And uh, good luck on stage. Thank you. Hopefully.